Hello, I'm going to show you a little bit about tote boarding, which is a brand new thing we've been uh, working on at Betmix. Uh, we've been doing this for quite a while. We're, we're at the point now where we're, we've uh, we've had some beta testers, but now we're, we're ready to bring on um, a larger group of people to help us out with this and get some feedback and uh, tell us what they think. So um, this is called uh, tote boarding, and, and the idea behind this is we're going to give you a lot of information about uh, the races you bet based on the information that flows through the tote board odds and the money and uh, ratios and inefficiencies and things like that. Uh, this is the screen uh, that you would start with. It shows you all the upcoming races. This is uh, Saturday morning, so we're going to have uh, a few minutes to the to the first post at different places. So you can see them up here. They're uh, sorted by uh, which race is coming up quickest. So the Belterra race one will, will be the first race of the day, and then Gulfstream, uh, Monmouth, Saratoga, etc. Um, now you, you can you can see these odds and they're going to be changing live uh, while you're watching the screen. So this is kind of like your personal ADW or sports bi sports book or, you know, OTB, I guess, not ADW, but uh, you can kind of keep an eye on every race that's coming up on this screen and what the live odds are uh, with each horse. You can see that the wind pool um, is shown here and this, this information does change live. So when it, when it updates, you'll see a flash and it'll, it'll change. You can also get the video on, on this uh, so you can, you can see Belterra. Uh, you can add multiple um, video streams, uh, so you can you can keep an eye on Gulfstream and and uh, Belterra. You can also take that full screen by clicking that button, and you get the full screen video there. Um, if you want to watch one uh, at that size, so um, th this is kind of where you start. And this again is betmixcom boarding just type in that word, betmix.com slash toteboarding. There's not a link to it right now from Betmix because uh, we're still working on it. We don't want to introduce it to, to everybody just yet. Um, so this is how you get there. I'll show you. Um, if you were to log in, I'll, I'll create a new window here, and I'd go to uh, betmix.com slash toteboarding. I'd come here, and then uh, if you're not already logged into to, to Betmix, you would uh, you would put in your uh, username and password here, and it should take you to uh, the tote boarding screen. Um, so once you're in here, uh, that that's when you'd really want to um, start picking races. And I'll go back to my other screen over here. Uh, so let's say I wanted to handicap this race that's upcoming at, uh, at Gulfstream Park. Um, you know, I can kind of glance at, at <clears throat> these titles here, and I can see what kind of race it is and how many horses are in that race. And, you know, I can kind of get an idea of the odds and, and things like that. Scroll down here and, and see uh, how many, you know, long shots there may be or favorites or how big of a favorite there may be. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click on Gulfstream. And this is going to pop up the main screen, and this is where you're going to be doing most of your, your tote boarding work. So let's, uh, I'll, I'll go through this um, kind of quickly and I'll give you an overview of all the things in here. Um, you're probably going to have more questions and that's fine. Uh, just email us or uh, get in touch with us. Uh, you, you can figure this out, I think, but there are going to be some questions and, and we certainly want to help you with it. But uh, uh, we could, I could make this video two hours long. Um, and the other reason I don't want to make this too in depth is because we are continually adding features to it. Uh, almost on a daily basis, so anything that I do from a video perspective will be almost outdated the next day. Um, and so we'll try to keep you informed as we as we add things to it, uh, getting ready for the big launch. So uh, here's the screen. This is Gulfstream Park Race One. Um, we'll start on this part right here. This is obviously just the name of each horse and their and their program number, and uh, they're ranked by one. They're ranked one to ten. There's ten horses in this race, and we always have the favorite on the top. Um, so the favorite is on the top right now, and the longest shot is at the bottom. Um, there's not a lot of money coming into this, uh, you know, race just yet. There's, you can see that there's only $536 right now on the two to win. Uh, we're 45 minutes from post. Um, you see the morning line odds on this horse. What his current live odds are, three to one. Uh, th this column right here says exacta percentage, and this one says odds percentage. That's what percentage of the pool they have. So if you look at this entire uh, win pool right now, uh, number two has 20.53% of all the money in the win pool. Uh, so it just went up $100 right there. 
Uh, this other one went up a little bit, so now it's 23.42% of the uh, wind pool. If you look at the exacta percentage, what that's saying is that if I if I were to go over here and look at all of the uh, combinations with the 2, 2, 11, 9, 7, so on and so forth, every one of those combinations with the 2 on top represents 22% of the money in the exacta pool. And we'll, we'll touch on that uh, later because that's that can be pretty informative. Uh, when a horse is getting a lot more money in one place than the other, that tells you a couple things. And, and certainly if you like that horse, you should bet it in, in the place where it's getting less money because that, that you're going to get a better payout there. Um, so that, that's this main part of the, of the thing here. Uh, so you can see, you know, the race type, if you kind of mouse over that, it tells you it's a maiden claiming race and, and what the conditions are. You see this little drop down arrow up here. That's another way for you to navigate to upcoming races. You can kind of get a, a sense here. If I hit that drop down, I can see what's next um, in chronological order. Over here, there's a race type stats. Uh, what this is, this is kind of familiar to, to bet mix users who, who use Angler and, and Bird Dog. We're trying to look at similar races based on the, the type of race it was and the number of horses in the race. So this has a 10 horse field and that this is a, a maiden claiming on the turf. So we're going to try to find a bunch of similar races. And we found, it tells you up here, 301 of them. And what we do from there is we say, well, the favorite has won similar races like this 29.1% of the time. Uh, the second choice wins 21% of the time, and so on and so forth, all the way down to the, the, the longest shot in the field. Horse rank 10 has only won 1% of the time. Um, and then similar information for place and show. So how often does um, the favorite win 29% of the time? How often does it place? Well, you know, that could be first or second. You know, if you bet it to place, you're going you're gonna to hit 50% of the time. If you bet it to show, you're going to hit 63% of the time. Uh, if you bet the longest shot in the field to show, you're only going to cash a ticket 4.7% of the time. Uh, this over here is ROI, So if you, and this is based only on the win. So if you were to bet $2 to win on the favorite in every single one of these 301 races, uh, you would have bet $602, but you would, you would have lost $141. Uh, and so you can go down. Most of these are negative, but uh, here's kind of a um, $52. You would have uh, won betting the sixth betting choice. And $224 you would have won betting the fourth betting choice. You, won't, you only would have won 5% of your bets, but in the over that 300 race sample, you would have made money. There have been a lot of high price horses that were the eighth betting choice, and you caught enough of them to make a profit there. So that kind of gives you an indication of, uh, you know, is the, is the favorite a really bad bet here? Is it a good bet? Um, you know, you can look at it that way. Uh, the second table over here is the odds distribution. So instead of looking at similar races by the track and the distance and the surface and all that kind of stuff, we're looking at all races that had 10 horses in it uh, that also had an odds distribution similar to this one, meaning that the favorite was about five to two and, you know, you had uh, two really big long shots and, a, you know, a group of horses that were kind of medium priced for uh, 9 to 2 to 7 to 1. So it finds races with a similar odds distribution. And as you can see, that's a much smaller sample. And then this is going to change throughout the race. You know, every time these odds update, then it's going to go back and try to find something that was similar to that. So it might start, you know, right now it's found 74 or five minutes from now, maybe 250. And then, you know, at post time, it may be something completely different than that. Um, uh, so, so you're going to get an idea here that, well, in races like this where there's the favorites five to two, which is kind of a high price favorite, the favorite only wins 19% of the time, 19.7% of the time. Uh, and you get that same information over here about place show and, and ROI. Um, so in races like this, you know, the favorite is kind of lukewarm, so it's not going to win at this high of a rate. Um, so that's a comparison that you can make that is also very useful to you when you're considering a bet. Uh, how often does a does, does a favorite or a second choice or a fifth choice win the race like this? Um, and also comparing that to how often uh, in, a, in a race with similar odds pattern. Um, up at the top, it kind of breaks down payoff. So how often does a horse win and pay between zero and six dollars in a race like this? That's 21 percent of the time. And with an odds distribution like this, that's zero percent of the time because this horse is uh, five to two, and that's going to pay seven dollars. So we know that there's no way 
uh, in a race like this, a favorite could pay between zero and six. So, uh, you know, in 20 plus, it's 16.2% of the time, and over here it's 23%. We're also looking at how often the exacta pays in, in these ranges. So you have a zero to 25 payoff on the exacta, and this is for a dollar. Everything's for a dollar. Um, I'll go ahead and sort this again by by uh, exacta will pay. So 39% uh, of the time, we we in historical races like this, the exacta combination paid between zero and 25 bucks. Uh, currently, right now, there's one, two, three, four of them that are paying between zero and 25. Um, that's kind of a low number because this is a big field and there's not a big favorite. Um, and then you can see the, the percentage chance of uh, something happening in these other payout ranges. Um, over here is the video. Now I can click on that. And it's it'll, not really close. Right now they're doing a replay show since it's 39 minutes out. But you can see the video here. And again, I can take that full screen if I want to. All right. And then collapse it back to, to this size. So it's very important to have the video on when you're getting ready to bet because you want to get your bets in at the last second. Uh, you want to know when these horses are going into the gate. So there's a lag on these videos. You'll see a message up here that says racing, but uh, usually it's about a 15 to 20 second delay. So when you see that first horse go into the gate, that's that's kind of the last second you have to bet. Uh, and sometimes you you know you may even get cut off but, uh, or shut out. So uh, And we also have this live chat feature that we're working on. So this is going to be a way for people to kind of talk about what they're seeing and what they're doing and their strategies and all that kind of stuff. And, and we're going to eventually turn that on um, and hope that every, everybody behaves and, and it doesn't turn into some kind of a uh, comment section where people are just getting nasty with each other. So we're going to turn that on at, at some point and hope, hopefully it remains civil. Um, some of these other tabs down here, um, we'll get to in a second. Some of them work, some of them don't. Again, you know, like I said, some of this stuff is, is built and working, and uh, it's been working for a while. We've had some people using it. We've gotten pretty solid feedback from those that have uh, used it uh, extensively. Um, and, and, you know, some, some people, it's, it may not be their, their cup of tea, but uh, we'll leave that up, up to you to decide. So the, the main thing here um, is, is the betting. And so to bet through this interface, you need to have an express bet account. You, um, you have to either, have, if you have one already, that's great. If you don't, you can create one. And for some of you, you know, you're going to be in states maybe that don't allow it, like Texas or, or, or Utah or something like that. You know, you're just not going to be able to create one. And we're sorry about that, but that's out of our control. Uh, it's the state regulations that, yeah, you have to deal with. If, uh, let me go back to the, uh, if I, if I come back to BetMix, I'll, or, or if I log into this again, as a, whoops, long one. Tote boarding. So I get logged in here. I pick a race. It comes up, and now I want to, um, you know, once I to to make that link, what you need to do is you need to hit the place but place bet button. This doesn't mean you're going to actually place one right now. It's just going to say, hey, this is a new user that does not have a linked account. So I need to do that. Uh, so if I click on place bet here, this pop up is going to uh, it's going to ask you for your express bet username and your express bet password. And that's where you would put that in. If you don't have one, you know, you can click on this link and sign up for one. Um, so once you do log in there, it'll it'll bring in your your express bet balance and then you can start wagering through this. And it's important to wager. Um, you know, th this is important because the whole idea behind this is putting in a lot of bets uh, quickly, and we'll, we'll show you how that works later. Um, all of your, I guess, account information obviously is very secure here. And that there's no um, withdrawal or depositing that we do on our bet mix side. You, you know, if you once you win a bunch of money, you need to go over to Express Bet to to take that out or uh, to deposit over there. So, so all that account management stuff is done on the express bet side. We're just maintaining your balance over here. And all the uh, bets that you create uh, are going to be logged on our side. So you can always look at them. You can see your payouts and your balances and all that kind of stuff. But just the day-to-day -day adding and withdrawing money needs to be done at express bet. So uh, that's how you would log into uh, or, or link your account or create one if you don't already have an express bet account. So we'll come back here to this race. Now we'll get to the to the important part of this, the, the kind of the, the new feature that we're really excited about is this thing called the Exacta Totem. So all this will tie together here in a second. And again, you know, I'm probably going to 
uh, not talk as much about this as I as uh, as I'd like to because I want to keep this relatively short. It's already at 15 minutes, but um, so anyhow, so we got uh, th this Exacta totem. You, if you bet Exactas at the track or you look at them at, at you know on, on online, however you bet, you know you're used to seeing the payouts in a, in a matrix that kind of is kind of hard to figure out sometimes you know the you know if you wanted to know what the two with the seven pays you got to kind of look at that chart and go over and, and as those change it's really hard for you to kind of get a sense of which ones are which and how they're how they're moving uh throughout the uh betting period before the race starts so this is real simple here we've just listed them all we know that there's a you know this is a 10 horse field so there's 90 exact combinations and, and by default we sort them with the lowest paying one on top and then uh, if you scroll down, you know, you see the highest paying one at the bottom. Uh, so the first thing that jumps out to you when you're looking at this is, wow, the, the, the lowest paying combination is the 11 over the 2. And, that, of course, we're 33 minutes out, so this, you know, this is not going to remain that way. But that's the fifth betting choice over the first betting choice. Uh, that one's gotten a lot more action than what you would expect would be the 2-5. You know, uh, you normally would expect the, the favorite over the second choice to be the lowest paying combination, and currently that's not. That's paying 2460, and that's the, uh, the, the fifth lowest paying betting choice. Uh, and this is where the value of this really comes into play. So what you see here, uh, so we have the will pay on the 11-2 is the lowest paying combination right now, and the probability of that happening is 3.3%. And that is determined by the live odds of, of the horses. So we have a formula that we've, we've tested this um, on hundreds of thousands of races and, and, and to derive the probability for the exacta based on the win odds is a pretty good way of doing it. So if, if, if we say something has a 3.3% chance of happening and you can see that this has changed to 3.23, every time the odds change, every time money comes in, all of this stuff changes. So this is important to to keep an eye on but uh if we say it has a 3.23 percent chance of happening it does basically have that you know might be 3.1 or might be 3.3 but it is generally uh spot on you know over time you know anything can you know you can have runs of things that are up and down but but these are very accurate percentage uh chances um the value over here um that tells you if this is a good bet or a bad bet you determine value by by looking at the probability and the and the will pay. So the easiest way to kind of explain this, I suppose, is to look at something that has a uh, a one percent chance of happening. So something has a one percent chance of happening, and we're, and we're based on a dollar will pay right now. It should pay a, a hundred dollars. So that's one in a hundred chance. Uh, if if I had a bag full of uh, lottery balls numbered one to a hundred, and, and I said, hey, pick pick a you know, give me a number, and you said number 12, and I reached in there and grabbed it out, uh, that, that was about a 1 in 100 chance of me grabbing that ball out, and you should, a fair payout for that happening would have been $100. Um, but here, you can see that right now, this this is uh, has a 1% chance of happening, and it's paying $156, which means it's paying 58% more than it should. So exactly fair value would be 1. Um, you know, and as these change, you know, these are going up and down in value. I can show you over here, you know, you can sort by value, and uh, you know you can look at this. This is way out of out of line here. This eight two combination has a has a one point five nine percent chance of happening. It's paying one hundred and forty nine dollars, and that's about uh, you know more than twice what it should pay. Now this won't stay that way. You know sometimes it does, but uh, you know for for the most part these values are going to really move when you get a lot. You know at the one minute mark, zero minute mark, these things tend to come come into line. Uh, at the opposite end of that, you can see this 1-6 combination, which is the longest shot in the field over the second longest shot, has a 0.05% chance of happening. It's paying $193 right now. It should be paying about 20 times as much as that. Um, and this happens because people over bet long shots. You'll see that from in every race you look at. It's called the long shot bias. It's, it's a it's well-established uh, economic theory. People tend to just bet on long shots more than they should because they're looking for a big payout. You know, you, you if you look at this thing and you're just a casual uh, gambler, you know, do you want to win fifteen ninety or do you want to win five hundred dollars? Uh, you know, people just bet these crazy combinations that have really have no chance of coming in. It, it's it's like playing the lottery. It's not gonna probably not gonna happen. It's gonna happen, as you can see, less than you know. It has a, about a 0.2% chance of happening, but but it's being overbet. 
Um, you know, sometimes you'll see the, the, the highest combination being currently right now. This is a bad bet, too, in terms of value. This is paying 1620 the 11 over the 2. Uh, but it's it's showing you 54% value. It's paying 54% of what it should, so it should be paying about $32. Um, so anyway, that that's how you kind of look at these probabilities and values and determine. Uh, you can you can determine a lot. We're not going to get into a, a whole lot of strategy right now, but the idea here, you know, there's there's a couple of ways of looking at it, and, and this is, um, you know, it, it it's a matter of preference. So if you uh, if you say, hey, you know, I'm only going to bet things that are providing great value. Why would I want to bet anything uh, that's not a good value? Well, that that means what this really means is that currently at this point in time, there uh, people are not betting that combination in the exacta pool, and that can be because it's they've made a mistake. Uh, the pools are inefficient. They're not betting on that combination in the same proportion that they should based on the win odds, or it could be because they don't they don't like it. Uh, they don't like it, so they're not betting it. And the ones that are providing bad value, meaning they're over bet, that could be because they really like it. Maybe there's some smart money out there that really loves this 1-5 combination. That's why they've dumped all this money on it. Typically, that's not, not true. You would uh, you would see these things um, become more more accurate as, as betting continues, but you can spot some inefficiencies, and that, that's the, the whole goal of this uh, toad boarding. So uh, basically what you want to do here is, uh, you, you know, when I say that it's important to have a betting account here, I mean, it's not, you don't have to have, you can use this without a betting account and just kind of digest this information on your own and kind of figure out, wow, this one's got, taking a lot more money in the wind pool right now than it is in the exacta pool. That'll, that'll probably even out, but these things are never exactly equal. I mean, occasionally they are, but typically a horse will have a little bit more or less in, in one pool than the other. And we're going to eventually add other pools here. We're going to have trifecta pools and other ways for you to kind of look at this information. But a real simple way to use this and kind of, uh, you know, the starting point for most people is, let's say I want to cover a bunch of exactas. And, and I think what what we all do or what we all used to do is, is make box bets and wheels and things like that. And it's real simple. I like four horses. I like this 2, 5, 10, 11. So I'll just give me a 2, 5, 10, 11 box. We know that would cost you... $12, you have 12 combinations there, and you got the exact same amount of money on each one of those combinations, which is not really uh, the smartest way to play. Um, and you also do that out of simplicity because you don't want to have to go up to the window and shout out 20 different combinations, or you don't want to type them all in uh, online if you're betting online. That, that's very tedious and takes a lot of time. So let's say I want to look at these, and, and each time, you know, I can click, each click that I make is a selection. And you see that selection show up over here, something that you could potentially be betting on. Um, uh, and if I click that, I can I can delete them all. If I unclick it over here, it's deleted. So let's say, you know, I can click and drag here as well. So let's say I want to, uh, I want to drag down until I get to 50% coverage. I'm dragged, I've, I've selected all these combinations. I can see that I've got 15 combinations selected. And the probability, this is the main thing we want to look at here, is 50%. And this means that uh, mathematically, I have a 50% chance of hitting this exacta with these combinations I have selected. Um, I can also get to 50% a lot of other ways. You know, I could start down here and just go up, you know, and just add a bunch of different things. I'm keeping my eye on that number over there. And, uh, you know, now I'm at, let me back that up, now I'm at, you know, roughly 50% here. So, so those combinations I just selected have a 50% chance of coming in. And that's the same as, as selecting, although they're different combinations, I still have the same probability and the math works out that way. So you can go top down or bottom up or, you know, just a, a hodgepodge of different combinations. And once you're at 50%, you really do have about a 50% chance of hitting that exacta. You can, you can achieve that different ways. Uh, using the most likely combinations, uh, means that you're going to be betting fewer of them, but it also means you're going to be getting less money. Um, so let's say that I've landed on this 50% combination here, and I can see that my total bet is $15, and my it shows me my payout range. Currently, uh, the lowest payout I would get is $17.50, and uh, the highest is uh, $82.10. So if I made this $15 bet, if I click Place Bet right now and made that bet, uh, you know, I'd be a winner if it, if it came in, I have a 50% chance of it coming in, and no matter what came in, I know I'm going to make a little bit of money. 
But let's say you want to get a higher probability coverage, and that that's kind of what people have tended to do when they're playing with this. You could say, you know what, I don't want a 50% chance, I want a 65% chance. So I've selected more combinations here, and now you can see that I uh, to, to cover those 24 combinations, which is 24 of the 90 available, I have a 64% chance of hitting it, actually 64.4 costing me $24. These are dollar increments here. Some tracks will not allow you to do dollars. Other tracks will. And by default, it's, it's going to default to the minimum bet amount that's available at that track. So if I want to bet 24 bucks on this, I could lose $6 if it came in to 11. So we have this option over here called the wager wizard. Um, and if I click this button, it's going to optimize these bets to make sure that I at least break even. I can also say, you know, so right now the exact is set to break even and the wind bet is set to break even. We'll get the wind bets in a second. So if I hit run wager wizard, you can see that it's adjusted these amounts. It's put $2 on a bunch of combinations and, and left the other ones at $1. So now my, my total bet is 34 bucks, but my minimum payout is 35 So now I'm, I'm, I'm going to at least break even. And in this case, I'm actually going to make $1.40 if any of these came in. My best case scenario is this 8-2 combination, which would, would uh, pay 111.50. So I'd make a, a, a nice little profit on that. Um, let's say I don't want to just break even. I want to make, you know, I want to make at least 10 bucks no matter what happens. Well, now it's going to readjust all these combinations. And you can see that the, the, the payouts will all change on, the, on those as well. So let's, uh, let's clear it out here. Um, and look at a bunch of different ways. Uh, I'm sorry, we'll, we'll clear this out and we'll start looking at the win bet situation over here. If I want to bet horses to win, you see a W, a P, and an S by every horse uh, that's shown on this board up here. If I click on the W, you can see right now it just added in this uh, $1 to win on the two. If I keep clicking it, this amount goes up. So I can very quickly start adding a bunch of different bets. And as I click them, you can see the amounts down here. Again, I can clear it out by clicking that X, or I could click them all, or a few of them, and then say I don't want a dollar on each of those. I can I can just mat, uh, select eight dollars up here, and it applies eight dollars to each one. Or I could say no, nah, I don't want eight dollars on the on the ten. I only want four on the ten. So now I've got all these uh, potential bets selected down here, and kind of the same thing happens. It tells you that uh, you're going to bet thirty six dollars to win on all these horses. And, and your payout range is between $24 and 72. You got a 57% chance of winning. And again, based on the win odds, um, you have a 57% chance of uh, one of these winning the race. And um, you know your bet situation is, is $24 to four, 64, but you got 36 out. Um, if I change that to, again, on the, on the win bet down here, it's $0. I want to break even, so I hit run wager wizard. Now you can see that it's at, changed well I changed them all to a dollar so I've got a five dollars uh, bet and my, my low payout is 550 my high is eight let's say oh, I want to make at least 20 bucks on this I'll do that again and you can see that it's changed the, the amount of bets here and I have to bet 68 dollars but my low payout is 88 <clears throat> and my high is 104 so if uh you know, by 16 on the, on the 5, 15 on the 10, 11 on the 11, and so on and so forth. Uh, so I could place those bets right now, and, and that would be my payout situation should I hit it. Um, again, going back to the exactas, you know, you can do that same thing. Let's say I want to get, uh, let me clear this out. It's on $8, so we'll make it back to $1. Um, I've got $20 and uh, <clears throat> 20, 21 combinations right now, 58%. Payout range is 17 to 84. I want to make at least $10 on the exacta. So I'd guard. change that to 10. Hit run wager wizard. Now it says I have to bet $37 and uh, my low payout is 47. Um, so that, that's how you do this. And, and so, you know, the, the question becomes, all right, well, is my goal just to, to get to 50%? Well, no, not, not in every race. You know, you, you, you know, in a lot of situations you can get, uh, a lot higher probability and in kind of in an affordable way you know everybody's bankroll is different and how much they want to bet is different and I, I will say up front if you're a two dollar better this probably is not a tool that's going to interest you uh, too much you know some of this information may be of value to you to look at 
But if you're only uh, if you're only betting a couple of bucks a race, it's probably not going to be of great benefit to you. If you're betting thirty, forty dollars a race, you you can really work with this. And what we found, you know, we have some people that have have come in and this, you know, they're really only comfortable betting ten to twenty a race. What over time though, that that you know that once they start trusting the numbers here and and how it works, uh, they tend to bet a little bit more. So so watch out for that. We don't want to. Um, we don't want to uh, <laughs> entice you to bet more than you're comfortable with, but it, but you know, the same th- token, you know, you you can, you will end up doing better betting this way than you probably have in the past, and that is because you are analyzing information in a way that other people are not, and you're having <clears throat> you're having a, a lot of information in your hands that uh, most people don't have right now. So. This is a, a great benefit to people. So, you know, again, let's say I wanted to, to place these bets. I've got a, a currently a 65% chance of hitting this. Uh, my payout range is 18 to 83. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll hit this place bet button. Let me let me hit run. Let me optimize it. So, I want to say my I want to break even. I'll hit run wager wizard. It's a $45 bet. I'll hit place bet and you'll see what happens here. Uh, each time, so th- very quickly, it's it's adding. All of these bets are being sent there. Once you see that green check mark, they're placed. Uh, you can see over here now in this column, it tells you how much you have bet on that combination. And those are wagered. You see your balance dropping up here. If you go over to my bets, it tells you uh, this my bets tab tells you every one of these bets that you've placed and how much. And uh, you know, you can hit the cancel button over here to get rid of them uh, and to, to take them away. And so you can sort that by, you know, a bunch of different ways. So I, I placed uh, a bunch of bets. If you com- if I come back over here, I can see my bets placed section of this table. Now these are placed. Those this information corresponds to what's over here. Uh, I can sort it now by this. You know, I've got three dollars on the two five, three dollars on the two eleven, so on and so forth. I have a sixty four percent chance of hitting it. I got forty five dollars bet. My my worst case scenario is a forty six eighty payout best case is $81 and I can keep adding to it you know I can say you know what I my low pay is on the 27 so I'm going to go ahead and bet another dollar on that if I just click it again and then hit place bet now you can see that the 27 now has three dollars on it now my lowest paying combination is a 510 so you may want to read you you may want to make adjustments to this as you're getting closer to post time but again I this is uh, I would never recommend making these bets this far out because all of this information is is very different than what it's going to be at post time so I would uh, go back through here and I'm going to start canceling these bets because I, I just don't want to, I don't feel good about betting based on something that is, is this far out um, from actually happening. So this is quite a few to cancel. I'm going to click on each one of them. So you can see now it's they're all changing to cancel the ones that I clicked on. I don't think I clicked on all of them go back down here and get rid of some of these other ones and so that's how that's how you cancel them and so you can see that uh, it's showing you your bets on the current race and I have show canceled selected if I uncheck that I'll leave this uh, 910 in place up here um, it shows me that it, you know that's my current active bet if I if I go to all show all bets it's going to show me all the bets I've made all day long in my you know, how much I bet, what my return was, and all that kind of stuff. So um, that, in a nutshell, is what, what you do here with tote boarding. And the real strategy here, obviously, is to find out how you could how you can achieve uh, maximum coverage at, at a, an affordable price on your bet. You know, which one's a good bet, which one's a bad bet is value here. So if I go back, and I can go up here and change the date at the top, and I'll change it to you know, yesterday, and I'll hit... Gulfstream Park race one and so you can you can adjust at this point the only way to go back to a, um, a previous race is to adjust this URL up here you can change the the date the race number and of course you'd also like if I wanted to go to Saratoga I'd, I'd type in SAR that's the Saratoga track designation and uh, you know then once you see you know that the races are official you have payout information over there so if I if I go to let's see race eight yesterday at Saratoga We'll look at that one. Uh, you can see it has the payouts here. You know, it came in five, six, two, four. The exacto paid nineteen twenty trifecta, so on, superfecta. Um, 
Now, if I look over here at this combination that won the 5, 6, uh, you know, I can see it down here that this was the, so I would have had to, so if I went to, I would have had to have gone to 56% to get to that. Now, you have a, a, a horse that went off here at 1 to 2, so he had a big favorite. And uh, you, you can see that um, it took 55% of the money in the in the win pool and 55.29 in the exacto pool. So, you know, you get some, that's a, an example where you have a huge favorite at the top. Let's try to find one where you, you don't really have a such a big favorite. Let's try another one. Uh, kind of the same thing here, but anyhow, you can uh, you can see that the, if this came in three six, that combination was right there, and that was at the fifty seven percent level. So you can see that if you'd just gone to fifty percent, you wouldn't hit that. But if you did, if if you'd use the bottom fifty percent, or you know, starting at the bottom and working your way up, you would have. Uh, so fifty percent is not really a magic number. I don't want to give you the impression that that is. Um, it's only a magic number in the sense that you you know, it's a coin flip. But if you'd like better chance than a coin flip, you know, you, you might want to go to 60%. And if I would have hit Run Wager Wizard there, you know, at 65%, it would have cost me uh, $12 to place that bet. And I would have I would have hit it with a 3.6 right there. And $12 out, I would have made 18.10. So another thing I want to impart to you is that you're not going to typically, you know, if, uh, your mindset is to go in and make a killing um by betting pick fours, pick fives, things like that. We'll eventually add that into this, but you know, at this point, you know, this is more about making a profit each race, not necessarily a killing. So, you know, we're talking about sometimes betting 30 or 4 30, 40, 50 dollars getting back, you know, 5, 10, 15 dollar profit or even a, you know, a break even or a little bit better. So, you're always making you're trying to make money every race obviously, but your mindset is not necessarily I'm going to bet everything I have on this one combination. You know, it's more about getting coverage in, in a smart way to, to maximize your chances of making a profit. And you can also do that on the win side too. You know, you could, you know, can I, can I possibly cover these three horses right here that give me a 70% chance of winning? Yeah, I can. Um, I'd have to bet $8, but you know, it's three on the three, three on the seven and, and $2 on the five. Um, and my, my payout is eight forty to nine dollars. That's that's pretty unenticing, you know. But eight dollars, and I got a potential to make one. So you know, you might want to come over here and say, well, I want to make at least ten dollars. I don't want to just make forty cents. But uh, so you can see here that changes it drastically. If you want to make ten dollars betting these top three favorites, you can do it. It's going to cost you a hundred and seven dollars. Your low pay is uh, one seventeen, and that's what happened here. The three one. So you had forty two on the three, and you got back. $117. So, um, you know, so it gets kind of pricey to, to do it in the wind pool sometimes, but you can uh, do it maybe in the exacta pool for a little bit less. Um, some things right now, we're not exactly, uh, we don't have all the data right now. We're start, just starting to do our investigations on what does this really, how can you look at this and, and uh, you know, when a horse is overbet or significantly overbet in the exacta pool versus the, uh, the wind pool? Uh, is that somebody trying to hide money? Are they trying to bet the horse in the exacta pool, not in the wind pool? Uh, th this race here is not a, um, it doesn't really tell you, you know, these percentages are, are fairly close. But what you what you see more often than not is when the second, uh, the horse that runs second, in this case it's the six, um, you know, it was over, it, it had a, you know, this is not a big percentage, but uh, a lot of times you'll see like a one and a half, two two percent, maybe even a three percent difference. Uh, and the amount of money bet in the exacta pool versus the win pool. Uh, for the favorite to win, you know, it tends to be the other way. Uh, the favorites tend to be bet more. Uh, and what you like to see is a big, big difference. And we'll just hop to another race and see if we can spot that. But, um, yeah, here, here's a horse uh, that, that had 2%, uh, you know, more than 2% bet on him in the, in the win pool than he did in the exacta pool. And he's the favorite. And so that worked out, uh, you know, that's kind of a tip that people like that horse. And instead of messing around in, his, in the exacta pool with it, they just went ahead and plowed their money into the uh, wind pool. And this horse was a winner. Um, you know, in terms of, all right, well, the second place horse, 
was over bet in the exacta pool 1331 versus 12 1260 and these are again percentages um so so this horse was bet more in the exacta pool than he was in the wind pool uh, and you can kind of piece that information together to help you to decide on these combinations uh and the, the bigger the difference the more it matters so you know, you'll you'll see some races where the you know you have a big favorite and it, it might be forty percent in the win pool and thirty thirty five percent or thirty two percent in the exacta pool, and that suggests that somebody has placed a significantly a, a very significant wager just to win. You know, it could be a thousand dollar, two thousand, five thousand dollar win bet on a horse that that has moved the the needle in terms of the representation in both pools. Uh, so instead of messing around in the exacta pool, they just bet it to win. And um, that's a pretty good indication. You know, it's also something like if you see if these are very even or it's even more in the exacta pool, that kind of suggests a lukewarm favor to me that uh, somebody is not really, uh, you know, the public has not put their money down on that horse to win. They, they've tended to put it in exactas because they're not exactly sure. Uh, and, and again, that's not always the case. It's just something to look at. And, and you'll You'll figure this out in terms of uh, strategies. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. Um, and we're, you know, like I said, we're this, I'm already at 40 minutes here, but uh, it's mainly at this point, you know, since we're going to be adding so many things to it, you know, down the road, we're going to have the trifecta totem and it's going to be operating the exact same way as the exacta totem is. We're going to have a lot of different ways to look at odds, uh, you know, based on what the daily doubles are, the pick threes, the pick fours, you know, a horse that is uh, five to two in the wind pool. But he may have been two to one in the double pool, so that's that's an indication that he was he was bet pretty hard in the double, and, and maybe you're getting a bargain right now in the wind pool. Um, you'll see a lot of this information uh, come in over the next few weeks, but we just want to get some people out there using it right now, and, and we hope you do, and we hope that you uh, ask us questions about how to do it, and also uh, you know suggestions that you have, uh, anything that you find, you know any bugs that you find, obviously let us know. Uh, it does it it is pretty stable in terms of, of betting. Uh, one one thing that, that will happen is if you're watching the video over here and, and, and the race is live and, and you start betting it and, and you, instead of seeing the green check mark, you'll see a red triangle. That means your bet didn't go in and that could be because, you know, the race already started. It could be because you didn't have enough money in your account. It could be because you didn't, um, you placed a, 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 tried to place a dollar exact on a, on a track that only had $2 minimum. So <laughs> those are some of the errors you may see, but uh, those aren't really errors. It just means you you either missed the race or you tried to bet an incorrect amount uh, account wise. So all, all of this stuff um, is pretty self-explanatory. Um, but, you know, it's, it's the kind of thing that the more eyeballs that we get on it, the, the better understanding we'll have of how people use it and how they want to use it. And um, I think you'll find that it's, it's a, it's a great tool to have uh, whether or not you do it, in conjunction with handicapping or, or so right now the only handicapping we have you know we're, we're thinking of bringing in the factor stats and the quick handicapping information from bird dog um but we don't want to we don't want to marry the two just yet because there is some sense over here of you should be following the the numbers and the money and the information as opposed to handicapping but we do have the pdf in here the handicapping stuff so you you know, we don't have the trainer and the jockey listed up here. So if you, you know, at a bare minimum, if you want to know who that is, you can you can pull up this PDF over here, and you can see that that was Gargan and Ortiz. So that that's a good thing, and you know you can get some sense of what uh, their handicapping profile is like using the BetMix stuff over here. And then you know these tabs, uh, you can just go back to the place bet. So that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, email me, Dave at BetMix.com. Uh, I think you're gonna have a lot of fun with this, and I think you're gonna find that you you do better than you you would um normally so that that's our hope um appreciate your time and best of luck